In the last part, we hit the get form data method that we created, passing in the files that we've chosen via this multiple file upload element here. What we're now going to do is actually construct this as a form data object, and we're going to return that from this get form data method that we've created. We can then pass that along to our PHP file. So let's go ahead and fill in this get form data method. I'm going to create a data element or data variable. And this is going to be a new form data object, which is going to store all of our form data. I'm also going to create a variable i as an iterator for the for loop that I'm about to create. So the for loop is going to look like this. It's going to say for i equals 0, while i is less than the source dot length. So remember, the source is what we output here. In this case, it's 3. So we've got this property here, 3. This is going to loop 3 times then. And we're also going to then increment this. So we're going to say i equals i plus 1. Within this, we're going to append onto the form data element. So we're going to use the append method here. And we're going to append this with file and the source at this position. So in this case, it will be 0, 1, 2, which we saw here. So 0, 1, 2. So three files will be appended to this form data. What we then want to do is also append data or append to data Ajax and we want this to just be true. Now the reason that we're doing this is cast your mind back to when we were doing the upload.php file. We have this check here. If post Ajax is available, then we output this. And this ensures that the data is coming from this file here because we're adding this Ajax um, uh, piece of data onto the post request. So then we return data because we want to use this down here or up here rather in our Ajax request. So we're now going to fill in the rest of our Ajax method. In this case, what we have is we want to create a ready state change method. So this will basically allow us to check the ready state, the status, and then go ahead and parse the response from the PHP file. So let's add this event listener to this HTTP request. So we use the HTML, HTTP, XML HTTP uh, object we created earlier, and we use the add event listener. So now we're going to go ahead and pass which event we want to listen for, and this is ready state change. And we have our callback here as usual. So what we're checking for is the ready state to be 4 and the status to be 200. So we want to make sure the request was OK. So we say this dot ready state. We want to make sure that's 4. And then inside of here, we want to make sure that the status is 200. Now, if this is the case, we want to just console log OK. Now, we already know that an Ajax request is being sent once we've chosen files. But let's just check this anyway. So if we hit upload, we should get an OK there. So we know that's been sent properly. So within here, what do we want to do? Well, we want to say uploaded is, and remember we stored that up here, so we're not using var here. We're declaring everything at the top here. And we're going to say json.parse. So we're parsing the result of what's been returned from this Ajax request. And in this case, it's this.response. So response is what we get back from the actual request itself. Let's console log this and check that this works. So we choose a couple of files, we hit upload, and we can see now we've got object, succeeded, failed, this is the JSON response that we output from our PHP file earlier. We can check this by clicking on upload.php and clicking the preview or the response. You can see this is what we output earlier, the JSON response. So we can see that that's being passed through. We can now access these objects with JavaScript. So now what we want to do is actually do a couple of checks here. Or actually, rather, instead of doing a couple of checks, we want to do an else. And then within these, we want to uh, basically call the callbacks. So inside of the success part, if the status is 200, we want to check the type of 
o.options.finish. Now remember, this is the function that we passed through earlier. So we want to make sure this is a function. Remember that's this and this. And then we want to say o.options.finished. So we call this function passing in the uploaded object that we got from json.parse. Now otherwise we want to do pretty much the same check here. So we're going to say if type of o.options.error is a function, we want to call o.options.error. And that's just going to call that and if we do get an error we'll have this console log not working. We obviously wouldn't do that in a production environment. So now if we return to this, we already console logging the data, so there shouldn't actually be any change. I removed the console log that was down here, but now we shouldn't see any change because we're checking if the finished option is a function, and if it is, we're calling it, passing in the uploaded data, which will then become this, and then we can console log that data out. So if we just check this, choose a couple of files, hit upload, Oh, and it says not working. So we get not working and the object out. So let's check what's happened here. Oh, of course, sorry, we put this in the wrong part. So let's go ahead and get rid of this and place that here. And we put this inside of there. Okay, so let's run through this once more. We check the ready state, that's just wrapped in everything. If the status is 200, we set the uploaded to the parse JSON that's been returned by the Ajax response. And then we check if the finished function is a function. Then we call it, passing in uploaded. Otherwise, if we don't have a 200, we have an error. So let's test this out once more. There we go. If it's wrong, so for example, if we passed upload uploads.php we're obviously not going to find that file so we won't get a 200 we'll get a 404 and therefore it just says not working so what's left to do now is actually go ahead and add an event listener for the progress of this um, so we'll go ahead and add an event listener down here so we say xml http dot upload now we're at now what we're doing is accessing the actual upload itself not the actual XML HTTP request. So we add an event listener to this, and the event listener is progress. So we obviously have a callback. So what's going to happen here is we're actually going to get progress sent back to us. We're going to have an event here as well. And we want to go ahead and store a percentage. So let's create a var percent up there. Now, we need to do a check here to check if the length is computable. So this is going to actually check if we can compute the length of the upload progress. So we create an if statement here and we say if event.length computable, and if that's true, then we can actually calculate the percentage. But for now, what I want to do is I want to do a console log on event.loaded. So let's choose some large files and we'll check what we see in the console output. So I'll choose quite a few files and hit upload. So you can now see that all this data, um, we're going to, well, ignore this because we've uploaded too much for our PHP installation. But what we are now seeing is we're seeing that, that, that basically what's been loaded and what has, oh, what's been loaded as it's being uploaded. But what we now want to do is actually calculate the percentage of this. So we use the math math.round method of the math object and we pass in the event loaded as we've just done the console log on. We divide that by the event.total and then we multiply that by 100. Now when we do a console log on the percent we see the following. Let's choose files within our upload limit. There we go. So that's the actual percentage now being logged to the console. When it hits 100, that's when the files have been uploaded. And you may notice we've got all these file uploads in here because we've just been testing this as we go along.
and they're all coming in now. So instead of uh, logging the percentage to the console, we're going to set the progress, which is the other method we have, passing in the percent there. So the set progress method down here, uh, there we are, takes a value, which is going to just be the percentage, and that's going to change the value of the progress bar and the progress text. So we need to create an if statement for each of these. Let's focus on the progress bar itself first. We want to say if o.options.progress bar doesn't equal undefined, so is it available, then we want to set the width of the, uh, the progress bar. In this case, we do have the progress bar selected by get element by ID on this element here, this span element and we pass this through to our uploader. So this is available, so this should work. All we want to do now is say o.options.progressbar. Then we want to access the width as part of the style, and we want to set this to checking if the value you know, actually exists. So we want to check if the value exists. If it does exist, we want to set this to the value, and we want to append on a percentage Otherwise, we want to set this to zero. So let's check that this works. So all this is doing is taking what we console logged, but setting it as the width of that element. And we looked at this earlier when we styled it. So when we choose a few files here, we hit open, hit upload, and there we go. So that's just taking the console log values, but instead applying it to the width of that progress bar. And that's done. Now we're going to go ahead and introduce the text. So we create an if statement, which is the same. We say o.options.progress text. And if this isn't undefined, which means has it not been passed in here, which in this case it has, we select the progress text, which remembers just the text within here. And we pass that through. So this will return true. And then we can say o.options.progress progress text but this time we want to say dot inner text and we want to set that to if the value exists the value plus the percentage we could have even stored this somewhere if we wanted up here just to make life shorter but otherwise we just want to do an empty string so now as well as uh, the width being represented by the value of the uploaded files or the progress of the uploaded files we get the text as well so that's the actual upload progress. While we've been doing this, we already know that all these files have been uploaded. Let's just go ahead and delete them. So we know that all these file uploads are being successful. But now what we're going to focus on, or in the next video, what we're going to focus on is actually going ahead and setting the data in this area when we finish. This is completely optional because we've completed the entire process of uploading files. But if you want to go ahead and represent this down here, we'll look at that in the next video.